What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and this is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 7, Episode 7, The Totally Excellent Adventures of Mac and the D. First of all, the title's way too long, it's definitely not going to fit fully in my review title. But this, <laughs> this episode was really good, and the season has been consistently getting better as it goes along. Um, and yeah, this one was a lot of fun, like, it took a little while to get going, but once it did, man, it was... It was enjoyable, because, like, at first, it was a little slow. And, of course, I mean, Max dealing with the loss of his parents, so, of course, he's going to be <laughs> distraught, and it totally makes sense, and I'm not at all knocking that decision to put him in that situation. I mean, it makes sense. Um, but it just did feel slow, but once, once it got to the point where Mac finally got out of the house, from there on, it was just a lot of fun. You know, they had a lot of... Um, 80s cliche moments I think they've been throwing in references a lot this season and I think some of them I've missed um I did catch a couple like I caught the uh in the one was it the 40s or 30s it was in one of the first few episodes Enoch and Koenig are sitting at the bar and he says you know this is the start of a beautiful friendship you know I caught that one from Casablanca uh Enoch at one point said uh, come with me if <laughs> Instead of come with me if you want to live, come with me if you want to... Well, I forget what he said now. Dang it, it was hilarious though. I forgot to mention it. But they've been having a lot of movie references. I feel like I caught more in this one though because... I mean, I've seen more 80s action flicks than I've seen anything before. Um, but this was a very 80s episode and I loved all the references. I love the fact that Deke went and started creating 80s music. Um... Because he obviously he knew all the songs before they came out, so he just wrote pretend like he wrote them, and it's a very deep thing to do. Um, but also the fact that he decided to not only make a band but also have the band members be agents as well, and then you have Coulson talking through the TV, which was just hilarious to think about. <laughs> it was perfect, um, and yeah, I mean all of the setup for it was fantastic. You know the the very. I don't know, just some of the shots made me think, oh, this is, an, this is an 80s action movie. I love it. Like, the the low angle and just the zoom in and the high five. and all, it, was, it was awesome. Um, so it was a lot of fun. The other thing that kind of caught me off guard, and it's not like this show has never done this before, but, man, this episode just brought out, brought back some of the, uh, the gore. Because, <laughs> I mean, the show has had gore before, but this season especially, it, it hasn't had a lot of it. In fact, I don't... The the face thing is very nightmare-inducing, of course. But this one is just like, you know what? Let's go straight back to blood spurting everywhere. Like, first, the the one computer repair shop guy gets just straight screwdriver into the chest and just... Um, and then the one robot shows up with a saw and takes out the, the drummer and his girl that he was with. That... I mean, it just, it got real gory all of a sudden. I was like, oh, I mean, we don't see anything, but you see a lot of blood. It caught me off guard. Um, but also, if we're going by, they're making references to kind of the films and stuff of these different decades. 80s is probably where it started to get more and more gory, so kind of makes sense. It is kind of funny, though, because I'm watching this, and of course, WandaVision, I've, I've seen that. And so it is kind of funny watching this now after having watched WandaVision because I'm like, it feels like they're kind of doing similar to what WandaVision did. But obviously it's it's different. But it is fun to see all the different cliches coming out from these different decades. Um, but yeah, all of it was a lot of fun. Uh, we do see more with Sybil. The story is getting pretty interesting. You know, she is planning on basically recreating her army again. And she's kind of having to start over from scratch. Um, so apparently what Coulson did did catch her off guard, which I'm glad they brought up because it, it seemed like it caught her off guard, but I wasn't sure whether to believe that that caught her off guard or not because, of course, she can predict the future, so it feels like she would have seen that. But maybe that was something that it wasn't... It, it was like one timeline that that happened, and so every other timeline it worked out where he didn't blow up the ship, so she just didn't expect it. Um... But yeah, she still has whatever device helps her predict the future, and uh, the little robot carried it, and apparently Nathaniel's a part of this now, which didn't look like he aged that much. I mean, they I guess just because they decided to use the same actor for it, um, 
But yeah, so now he's working with Sybil. I don't really know how much it has changed, like, as far as S.H.I.E.L.D. and Hydra is concerned. Like, obviously they took out uh, Wilfred Malick, but Gideon's still alive, and of course um, Nathaniel's alive now. So I don't know, even, like, Project Insight, like, they tried to do it, and then they blew up Project Insight, but that doesn't mean that they wouldn't try again, right? Like, they still have the technology to do it. Um, so, I don't know, I... I don't know if they can really go that far into detail about how much has changed in the timeline already, but it is interesting to see that. And of course, we're still going by the idea, and I don't know if they're going to use this idea or not because I don't think this, I don't think this show happened before Endgame, or maybe it did. Can't remember, but you know this whole concept of time is fluid, but you know you travel back in time. Like, if I travel back in time to yesterday, <clears throat> and I find, you know, I find the lottery, the winning lottery ticket for today, or the winning lottery numbers, I travel back two days ago and give my past self the winning lottery numbers, and that version of me wins the lottery, when I come back to my future, you know, will I be living in that future where I won the lottery, or will I be living in a different future? Based on how Endgame did it, it sounds like I would return my time would still be the same, but that version of me would now go on and live in a future where now I've won the lottery. Um, so, like, branching timelines. But this seems to be a little different in how they're handling it. Like, the future is changing as things change. But at the same time, they're also flowing through time. They're not really, like, jumping to the past and then jumping back to their own time, which is kind of how Endgame handled it. Um... So it's, it's all kind of up in the air. It's all a little crazy. I don't know how much of it makes sense or not. But, I mean, this episode was definitely a step further in the right direction. It's constantly picking up. And, yeah, I, I can't wait to see how it all ends. Obviously, you know, this was more focused on Deke and Max, so the rest of the team wasn't as involved. I found it a little weird that they started the episode with Deke being debriefed by May. And then they had one reference where all of a sudden she cuts him off. She's like, okay, oh, a band? Are you serious? And then tells him to go back to it. And then we don't cut back to that debriefing anymore. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, like, why? I, did you do that just so you could set up that, you know, that's an 80s cliche? That they had the debriefing going on? Like, I, I don't know. It just it did seem a little weird. Um, but yeah, all in all, good episode. On to the next one. See you there. Now episode 8, after, before. <sighs> a lot going on. Um, so, for some reason, the drive on the ship is not working, and so Yo-Yo has to go see Jaying to try to figure out if she can fix her powers, and blah, 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 blah. She fixes them, and then blah, 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 she saves the day. Until she doesn't. <laughs> I don't know. Um, not a bad episode, by any means. It was just, it was pretty straightforward. Um, the stuff with Yo-Yo and her powers, it was interesting to learn a little bit about her, you know, backstory and stuff. Um, but ultimately, like, it wasn't the strike, it was a mental block, okay? And then, you know, she tries to work through the mental block. She and May, of course, have to fight for May to really work through her feelings, which, I mean, honestly was a good, it was a good scene, you know? Just from finding out May had to be the one to help her through all of that, um, to realizing that the best way to do it was to fight... Yeah, it was it was well done, and I liked the fight scene. I liked getting to see Yo Yo experiencing all the pain again and trying to figure out how to work through it. Um, so all that was good, but yeah, in the end, all of a sudden she's just like, "Oh, I don't have to bounce back. I can just go fast." I'm like, okay, so what have you been trying to do this whole time then that hasn't been working? Like, I I don't know. It it just seemed weird, like that she would not be trying to run at all. Like, because she was expecting to just bounce back, but then realizing that she's holding herself back, that she should just run, and then she can actually, like, basically, like, Quicksilver almost move from one place to another. I mean, okay, like, I guess that's okay, but it just seemed kind of out of nowhere, it's just like, oh, okay, and then on top of that, after she fixes the drive, the fact that all of a sudden it's just like, Enoch is just like, it didn't work, and then they jump again. What didn't work? Like, taking the power... Ooh, 
excuse me, taking the power source out didn't work or the fixes that you tried to implement didn't work, what didn't work? Like, are they trapped in some, like, they, they were talking about how the jumps kept getting smaller until we did a loop inside of a loop. Or not a loop inside of a loop. A jump inside of a jump. Like, I don't know what that means, but is that where they're stuck now? Is like they jumped and jumped again, and now they're, some, like, it was sudden. It was out of nowhere. It's like, oh, okay. I guess what Yo-Yo did didn't work. So why did we go through all of that again? <laughs> I don't know. Like like I said, I didn't mind seeing Yo-Yo. And honestly, the stuff with seeing Jaying again, the fact that Nathaniel has these powers and he goes and helps this girl named Korra, which, little silly, the fact that she's like, here, let me grab this gun to shoot myself. But first, let me run out of the building and all the way onto a hillside to do it with nobody else around. Even though I have it in my hand, I could just end it right now. Like, I don't think... People that want to kill themselves, like, hey, I've got a gun, I could do it right here, but I'd rather do it out on a pretty hillside. Like, just, that that part was dumb, but ultimately what it leads to is Nathaniel finds her because Sybil saw that she was going to try to kill herself today, and so he stops her from doing it and basically kind of makes her rise up against Jai Ying and say, hey, this is, this woman has kept you captive for so long, rise against it. Um, and apparently he just wants to create some anarchy because he's crazy. <laughs> and that's about it. Like, he's not bad by any means, but I don't know. The motivations from him are not great. Like, the the actor's doing fine. I actually enjoy his performance. But the character for Nathaniel right now is just... Like, he was supposed to die, but then he didn't. I was kind of hoping we might find out what changed. Why did that change? Why was Wilfred not killed? You know, when he was supposed to die. I was hoping we'd find that out, but we haven't. And then he sees Daisy using her powers, decides he wants them for himself, and now he just wants to change up the timeline. Because he knows that Cora was supposed to kill herself, and then he stopped her from doing that. He's like, let's create some anarchy. I'm like, what? Okay. It's got to be the weakest character motivation I've ever seen. <laughs> like, unless he's just crazy and that's it. Like, I guess he is a little psychopathic, but... I wish we just got a little bit more about him, why he feels this way. Um, with, what's her name? The the character that Dove Cameron played. Was it Ruby? I can't remember now. Um, but for her, like, she was also kind of a little psychopathic. But you could see why. Like, she was not raised in a good environment. <laughs> um, so it kind of made sense why she was a little crazy. With this guy, it's just kind of like, okay, why is he this way? Like... Is it just because his dad was Wilfred Malik, and because he's an evil dude, he just his sons were raised to be evil dudes too? Like, is that it? I, I don't know. It, it feels weird, and it feels kind of out of place. Um, and Sybil, I don't know why she's teaming up with him exactly. Like, I guess her thought is if he can unravel enough in the timeline, it will basically cause it to break down a lot of what shield was doing i don't i don't really know what her plan is either like it feels like the motivations for these two haven't really been fully explained and i don't know if they're going to be or if we're just supposed to know what's going on um but yeah it's all a little out of nowhere uh stuff with Gemma, you know she's clearly going through a lot right now trying not to remember fits but also still wants to see him again and just trying to remember everything going on like it's it's well written um the fact that they gave Coulson another body, I'm just kind of like, of course, like, sure, we can just create bodies out of nothing now. That definitely hampers any sort of caring whenever somebody dies. It's like, we'll just build them another body. Um, I don't know. Again, like, that sacrifice on the ship seemed like a good way for Coulson to go out, but then they put him on a hard drive. And they put him on TV, and like, okay, that's kind of funny, and then they're building him another body, and now he's back in this new body. I'm like, okay, so Coulson really never will die then, will he? Um, it's just, I don't know, it's it's a little silly, and it's kind of, it takes down any further death that Coulson has from here on out. I'm just like, well, just build him another body. Until they get rid of that hard drive, just build him another body. Like, that's all you gotta do. They probably backed up his hard drive somewhere, too, so even if they get rid of the hard drive they have... They could probably just upload another hard drive into him and he'll still be alive. Kind of dumb. Um, 
But aside from that, like, everybody else is going through their own little personal struggles right now. You know, Max trying to still be the, the director and make decisions. Deke is, you know, seeing what Gemma's going through and trying to help his grandmother, you know, while still helping out on the ship, too. Daisy's still healing. Sousa got himself a new leg, but you can tell he's sort of trying to find out what his place is here because he doesn't really know a lot of what's going on, but he knows to be prepared and he knows to try to help out just where he can. Um, and then, of course, Enoch. It feels like Enoch should know a lot more about what's going on than he does. Um, it feels like they kind of, I don't know, they're, what's the opposite of being OP? They nerfed him. That's, that's, that's the terminology. It feels like he should know a lot more about this technology, and he should know a lot more about what Sybil's trying to do since he is also a Chronicom. But it feels like they just made him kind of dumb at times just to make it to where the team can't figure out what's going on. Um, and they even, like, you know, wrote it where he didn't make it back to the ship in time. So, yeah, I, I don't know. But anyways, all that being said, though, it was still a fun enough episode, but I guess we'll see where it's going next. So anyways, on to the next episode. See you there. And finally, episode 9, As I Have Always Been. This is the best of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. right here. Like, I, I've talked about how Fitzsimmons is, like, the heart of the show, and it's some of the best... I mean, it's basically they're the best Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. characters. But this episode right here is just prime Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. It's got the humor, it's got the writing, it's got the character, it's got the sadness, it's got the heartfelt... Moment. Oh, it's just... Oh, I've seen this premise, premise done before. Yeah, you've got one person who's waking up, and every time they wake up, it's a new time loop, and they have to figure out what to do next. But the way they handled it was so fun. Because first of all, Daisy wakes up, goes through all of it, time loop happens, she wakes up again, goes through all of it, but this time decides to go to, you know, to Coulson, or well, third time she decides to go to Coulson. And it's just fantastic, because apparently they've both been time looping for a while. But whenever Daisy dies, she starts the time loop over, having completely forgotten everything. So this is not, like, it's so interesting that they started us, not the first time that she time looped, but several times into how many times she time looped, just not for her. This is, you know, her third time doing it, because she just recently died and had to start over. So that's already interesting. I like the concept. And honestly, that scene where Coulson, she first wakes him up and they have the first conversation about it, brilliant. I, I was rolling with laughter. But then you throw it on top of that. They decide to finally, they find out about Gemma's implant. And so just going to find out about that and they're trying to get it out of her and all of a sudden she dies. So then they send in Daisy and then she dies and they find out somebody is killing them. And then it's like a mystery now. It's like, wait, who's trying to kill us within the fact that we're already about to die. Like, who would do that? Is somebody crazy? Is somebody, like, taken over by a Chronicom? Which, honestly, was something that I've wondered since the beginning of the season. Like, are we going to have one of the team members get turned into a Chronicom? Like, obviously, they would be dead, so it's kind of hard to imagine they would do that with a main character. Maybe closer to the end of the season they might do that. Um, but then all of a sudden you're finding out it's Enoch, and he was programmed so if anybody tried to take Gemma's like memory whatever d debugger I don't know but if anybody tried to take the implant out he would kill them <laughs> including her she tried to take it out herself it's just like oh my god <laughs> now what do we do they try to take on Enoch that doesn't work they try to distract him that doesn't work just very very interesting and I like all the setup for it. It's fantastic. It's well written. The pacing is perfect. You know, a lot of quick cuts that make it hilarious. It's, just, it's so well done. Like, I really, really loved this episode. This, all in all, was fantastic. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just, the humor got me. And it, I could go on forever talking about each little part that made me laugh. Um, the stuff with Daisy and Sousa... Like I said, I could tell they were kind of building up their chemistry a little bit. And honestly, it's not a bad it's not a bad romance, you know? And I've had some issues in the past, like with some of the other romances they set up on the show. Um, but 
for the most part, they've done a good job. You know, Fitzsimmons obviously is it's the best of the best, and I've talked about it before. Yo-Yo and Mac has been a good one. And even Yo-Yo and Davis, whenever they had their little thing before he died, that was nice. Um, Deke and Daisy was something they seemed to be setting up, but I think that ended up being more of a joke. Um, Daisy and... I forget the name of the guy now. It was the guy that sacrificed himself in that one season where she saw somebody dying and it ended up being him. I think he had... I know he was inhuman. I think he might have had lightning, like, lightning powers, maybe? God, it's been so long. I don't even remember now. But that was a nice little romance as well. This one, I kind of like it. You know, it happened pretty quickly, but I feel like they are two characters that mesh pretty well. You know, you've got the, that one scene where he basically lays it out why they work so well together because she is somebody that likes to run her head against a brick wall, and he's somebody that likes to be there to help people get back up after they do that. But of course, you know, he doesn't do it for everyone because he has interest in certain people. And yeah, it, it does make sense. Um, so I like that little, that little scene between them. And I think they, they do work pretty well as a, I, I don't know how much time they really have <laughs> time to really flesh out that romance or if this is just, you know, something they're going to have for the time being. Um, because it sounds like, based on what Enoch says, it sounds like he got a look at the fact that they didn't get renewed for season 8, and he knows this will be the last season. So, whether that means that Daisy will be the one gone? Because it sounded like when he was talking about it, Daisy wouldn't be around anymore, but the team would still go on. I don't really know what that means. Um, but I assume it's something bad, possibly. But, yeah... It, Curious to find out more about that. Um, but yeah, that final scene with Enoch... Almost worked. The The emotion was there. I liked the discussion, the dialogue. It was well written. But, problem is, is that Enoch as a character didn't really grip me. So while it's, you know, nice to see that he sacrifices himself to help... And he does it basically almost without a thought. You know, they're discussing it. Deke is like, there's got to be another way. Jim is like, there's got to be another way. And Enoch just like, nope, there's no other way. Here you go, take this. Like, it's it's a nice moment for him. And he's had his ups and downs on the show. And that's kind of why I didn't really feel for it in the end. Like, it was, it was a sad discussion. But I didn't really feel sad that Enoch was dead. You know, and... I don't know. It's like they almost stuck the landing with him. They almost got me to care about him. But ultimately, eh, you know, it just it didn't quite grip me. Like, it is it is a well-done scene. But for what they're trying to invoke, the emotion they're trying to invoke, it didn't quite get there. Um, so that was about the only critique I have. Um, but yeah, I mean, all in all, this episode was just... It was fantastic. Like... Because of how many times they I've seen these time loops done in shows or even in a movie, you got to do something creative with it. You got to do something that makes it interesting because it's been done to death. So you got to do something with it. And in my opinion, they did. You know, having it where when she dies, like it's not always they die and that's the time loop. In this case, it's the time loop happens after a certain amount of time. But if she dies, she forgets. And the fact that Coulson has been doing this since the beginning, and she doesn't always remember to turn him on. Like, I I enjoyed that. It was a nice little twist on it. And then throwing in the mystery, and then throwing in the fact that they were on a limited amount of time. It was just, it was really well done. Now, um, the other, one other thing to talk about that does have me very intrigued is, of course, when they finally do get the, the implant out of Gemma. She seems very distraught. She's crying. She's like, what have I done? One of two things. One, either taking the implant out means that now the Chronicoms have the information. Even if, you know, the loop resets and the implant gets put back in, they still somehow have access to that information now that she's taken. I don't know if that would work. You know, like, the fact that she took it out at all means they now have access inside of her mind and they can get to Fitz's location. Or the second, which 
is much more disturbing and heartbreaking is that she did something to Fitz to keep him safe, but also, I don't know. Like, as much as he was crying, it kind of puts me in like a, oh my god, what did she do to him type of feeling, just based on her reaction. So, I assume, I don't know, she, that's the thing. Now, the loop reset, she has it back in her head, which means... She's not going to remember that the implant was out, which means she's not going to remember what she remembered before. Yeah, it's concerning. It's very concerning. It's 12.30. Midnight, 12.30. Probably need to go to bed after this review. I'm tired. Um, but I do wonder if Daisy or Coulson might bring that up to her in the next couple episodes. Like, hey... We found out about this, you told us about this, and your reaction was concerning, so we just want to make sure that Fitz is okay, so we're going to take it out again, especially now that Enoch can't stop us. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah, just, it was a great episode to end on, really enjoyed it, really had fun. Uh, I think the one moment that stood out to me the most, just final Thing, just because it was probably the one that really got to me was the ep uh, the one loop where they all tried to take on Enoch and then they all ended up bloody and bruised and <laughs> the fact that Deke is just in the front of the pile bullet hole through the head is Deke dead? yep should we be sad about that? no <laughs> killed me <laughs> killed me it's great Oh, man. But anyways, um, yeah, that's it for me. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on these three episodes? Let me know what we can talk about and discuss all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. <laughs>